Yeah, let's just wait a couple of minutes. Okay, yeah. you can see the main screen, right? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe let's just wait one or two more minutes and then I think we can get started. So how is the community going? Is it? It's good. Yeah, you, yeah. How's the growth? Where are you guys seeing like growth? Is it in the US or is it internationally or? Um. I would say it's both. Like we have a very big presence in Bali and Thailand as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to see if we can turn on captions for this. So that is possible. Hmm. Video, audio. Do you know how to turn on captions for this, George? I can just turn um, it while you. Captions? I, I can look into it, no worries. I don't think I've ever done captions on Zoom before. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, I think we can start now. I will look into the captions during. Okay. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you, George, for this. I'm really excited. So um, the meeting is recording right now and we will be posting this to both our socials and in the community. Great. As always, thanks for having me. Uh, tax season's finally over. I survived, hope all you did as well. Uh, hope you guys got filed your tax returns on time. Um, but even if you didn't, uh, it's kind of, most people don't realize this, but if you're due a refund, there really is no deadline because you, uh, the penalty is, bait. you're still required to file, but there's no penalty. So you have three years to claim your refund because the IRS obviously doesn't want to incentivize people that they owe money to file the tax return is basically what it comes down to. But so if you didn't file and you're due a refund, you have three years to claim that refund, just so you know, just a little tidbit of uh, insider tax information. Um, but anyway, uh, I just wanted for this session, I just wanted to lay out three main hacks um, that we uh, utilize to reduce our clients' tax bills. Uh, the bulk of our new clients haven't taken advantage of these hacks. So if you implement these three hacks, you can save hundreds, sometimes thousands. Um, uh, these are what we'll get into. I'll just go over the 2022 tax year updates for the involved freelancers. There's only one main one. Um, and then hack number one is how S corps can save you thousands. This is the, the big one that everybody talks about that I mentioned a lot, uh, but it's just, we've, it's just impactful and it can, it can save you a lot of money. So it's the main hack. Uh, hack number two, tax deductions for creatives and influencers. We'll get into how, how your specific industry is, uh, you're allowed specific tax deductions that a lot of people aren't. And then hack number three, maximizing home office tax deductions. That's a big one uh, right now because a lot of people are, are working from home. Um, so we'll get into that. Um, so the big tax update for 2022 um, is that for going forward from 2022 on, if you're getting money from either Square, PayPal, Stripe, like Uber, any, any, any of these payment platforms, they're gonna start issuing a, what's called a 1099K. Um, and prior to 2022, they were still required to issue these, but they only issued them 
if you had more than 20,000 in revenue and more than 200 transactions. But going forward, as long as you have 600 in revenue uh, or receipts essentially, then they're required to issue this. So the IRS will get this. Um, and if you don't file a tax return with revenue showing at least that amount, then you'll get a letter saying that you that you owe and it'll they'll assess penalties and it'll be a pretty big deal. So uh, this is I this is a little screenshot of the form. This right here, um, the seventy four thousand. That's that's what they have in their records as the revenue that they sent you for the year. So you have to have it uh, in that at least that amount in your tax return. So this is what it looks like. Uh, make sure they have your current address so you get it and you'll have to reconcile that when you do your tax return in 2023 for 2022. Um, so, and this applies to if you have an LLC or if you're a sole proprietor. So keep that in mind as well. But that's the main tax update for 2022. Nothing, no real changes beyond that that apply to freelancers. So we won't dive into that too much. Um, so hack number one, I usually mention this uh, because it's so important. Uh, I haven't gotten into detail about it, uh, the mechanics of how it works in a while. So I'll just run it through you today. Um, just as an example, tax season's only been over for less than two weeks and we've already done four of these so far for our clients. S Corp election. So now's the time to do it. Do it as soon as you can. Um, and it can save some of you thousands. Um, so the way it works is you, by March, if you file by March 15th, the, the, the election, you get an automatic acceptance. But if you file after that, it's not automatic and you have to request a, a late and they usually accept it if you have a, a decent excuse. So um, keep that in mind. Um, you can, so we have a, a tax calculator on our website that kind of helps you, gives you an idea of the tax savings and the cost. And I'll kind of, I'll, I'll show you how that works and then get into the mechanics of it. This is, this is the URL. Um, and this is a screenshot of it. Uh, you basically put your, your net income and what a, what a reasonable salary would be for your given profession and your skill level. And then it lays out the tax savings. And then on this side, it lays out all the costs. There's obviously costs associated with setting up an LLC, setting up a payroll, filing a tax return, doing the election, we charge. 559 to do it. Um, so if you if you factor in all the costs, um, and in, like in this example, somebody making 150,000, this is this is like the optimal example. They can save seven thousand dollars a year in self-employment taxes. Um, so you can go to this website and check it out and see if it's something that you should at least analyze and make sense for you. Um, so I'll get into the mechanics of how it works. Uh, in this example, I just I just did a, a freelancer that's making seventy five thousand in profit. That's that's gross revenue minus all the expenses. Your net this is your net profit is what we're basing this off of. So as a sole proprietor, your net profit um, you get a, a deduction for your self employment tax, which is the the tax that we're saving. So um, if you have 75,000, your self-employment tax on that would be 5,700, taking your adjusted gross income to 69,000. And then I just assume the standard deduction. So your taxable income as a sole proprietor would be 57,000. Um, and then your federal tax, and there's really no difference between a sole proprietor and an S corp in federal tax, or there's very little. Um, the tax savings comes down here in the, the FICA and Medicare self-employment tax. So your tax income or your actual tax liability would be $8,000. Um, and then when you factor in the 
savings or the excess self-employment because your self-employment tax as a sole proprietor is based on this 75,000. So if you take that, the 15% of the FICA and Medicare, your total tax bill would be 19,000. And that's on again, 75,000 in income. Um, but if you, in, in this same scenario, as somebody who's elected S Corp for the year, um, making 75,000, um, they, they get the self-employment, they pay less self-employment tax. So their deduction for self-employment tax against taxable income is a little bit less. Um, so after factoring in that and the standard deduction, the federal tax is actually a little bit more, um, but then you calculate the self-employment tax on the 26,000 in taxable income versus the full 75,000 because you've paid yourself a reasonable wage and that's where they get their self-employment tax. So if you factor that in, um, you're only paying 6,400. Um, and if you add that to your tax bill, your total tax bill would be 16,000 versus the 19,000 you paid as a sole proprietor. And hopefully I didn't confuse you. I know the numbers kind of get uh, jumbled up and a little confusing, but it works. We do it. We've, we've done it for well over a hundred clients. So um, it's something that can just have an immediate impact on your, on your tax savings. So that's why I like to hound it in so much um, because it's so important. Um, but yeah, if there, if, I don't know, if, is there any questions in the queue about that, Alyssa? Or um, I think for, um, the difference between sole proprietors and LLCs. There's not any questions yet, but I do have a couple of questions later about quarterly and different kind of platforms. So I can hold them till the end if you want. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Mm -hmm. I know that's that gets pretty um, yeah. confusing, but do you have uh, like um like an estimate of how much it will cost to set up an S Corp or an LLC? Uh, yeah, that's on, that's here. That's, um, you have the LLC register. You have to form an LLC, which there's costs associated with that. Okay. It's usually, and depending on what state you're in, California is the highest. It's 800 a year in oh, California. Wow. <laughs> uh, most states, it's usually between 100 and 300. So okay. I just put 250 here as the initial registration fee. Um, and then sometimes you have to have a registered agent if you're not, if you don't, if you're not forming the LLC in your state. And then we charge 559 to walk you through this whole process. And the process usually takes a couple months because it involves filing the paperwork, uh -huh. setting up the, the payroll. So it's a pretty comprehensive process. And then you have to we, we recommend you use Gusto for your payroll service provider. So that's usually about 250 a year. And then you have your annual LLC fee. So it all adds up. So okay. usually it's a, about 1,000 to 1,500 a year in costs. Uh -huh. But again, you're, you're, in this example, you're saving uh, close to $8,000 or over yeah. $8,000. So the net, the net savings is 7,000. So Obviously, yeah. you wouldn't care about the thousand dollars or fifteen hundred in costs. So, and if you are um, forming an LLC or an S corp, but it's just you, then would you have to use Augusto or um, a factor in a cost of administering? Um, yeah, I mean, you you would want to do a, a payroll service provider because okay. you're paying yourself as an employee, and there's I still. See quarterly requirements. So you definitely, we don't even do payroll for our clients. We make them uh -huh. go to Gusto because it's just so tedious and they, they have a, a very slick platform that makes it quick and easy for you. Okay. And it's okay. relatively cheap. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, cool. So, okay. Um, so the S Corp, we got that taken care of. Uh, hack number two is tax deductions specific to creatives and influencers, which uh, seems to be a pretty common um, industry with the Numina community. Um, so in general, uh, the IRS defines uh, 
at any expense. They use very general, vague language. They, it's necessary and ordinary. Um, to anything that's ordinary or necessary, commonly and typically used by people in your trade or industry. Necessary expenses refers to those expenses that are helpful and appropriate. Necessary expenses must also be ordinary in order to be tax deductible. Um, However, the IRS does not publish a complete guide of, of, what's, of what's actually deductible just because there's, that would be ridiculous because there's so many different industries and you couldn't do that. So they just use very general terms. So that leaves open a lot of um, sort of outside the, the box thinking when you're, especially when you're in the creative industry. Um, oh, so, sorry, I have a question. Sure. Um, so let's say like you're a creative that needs to drive a lot. Could you mm -hmm. deduct gas costs as well? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. There's, there's two ways you can do that. You can either take the standard uh, auto rate at 56 cents a mile okay. and just do that flat, or you can accumulate all your gas costs and maintenance costs and the depreciation on the car, and then take a percentage of business versus personal use for the year. Um, so either way, if, if you're using your car for traveling, both methods, the standard and the actual, you have to track your mileage. So that's a good point. Every Anybody who's traveling and using their car Regardless, track your mileage from the from the get go, from the beginning of the year to the to the whole year. And you have to the IRS says you have to have a, a mileage log showing the beginning mileage for the year and then the ending and then split out between business and personal. So there's some apps you can buy that help you with that. Or you can just do a like a, a mileage log in Excel or something. Um, so, yeah. No, that's really cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh huh. Um, so a lot of a lot of freelancers in the like advertising industry, they can deduct their cable bill. If you're in the music industry, you can deduct music platforms, art shows, things like that. Trade publication. These are things that you probably, as a somebody who's creative, already are subscribing to just because you like it. But you can actually call it a business deduction. So, like Ad Week, PR Week, uh, any any trade publication that you're already is a is a deduction because it increases your your knowledge in the in the industry. Um, uh, if you take like creative education classes, art classes, music classes, uh, any conferences or workshops that you go to, um, that's all that's all deductible. Um, research related travel, if you travel to um, these conferences or you're just traveling for any any business related activity, um, you can deduct that. And then, Meals, uh, this is only for 2021 and 2022. I've mentioned this before, but you can really take advantage of this. All, all your meals at restaurants are 100% deductible. Usually they're 50% deductible, um, but because of the pandemic, they, they made a law and allowed you to deduct 100% uh, of your meals that you spend at restaurants. And then I guess the, the Congress was just trying to help the restaurant industry. so you can turn like a $100 business meal with the, with your tax savings, you can turn that into like a $70 business meal. So you can take advantage of that um, through tax savings. Um, and then influencers, this is, this is kind of a new topic uh, in the last few years because of the proliferation of, of new influencers that are making some of them a, a lot of money. Um, all the all the costs of of your background staging either in your home or when you're traveling that's all deductible so keep that in mind if you're even if you're not an influencer per se um anything that you're posting to any costs related to posting uh on social media to to attract attention and get 
and get customers, you can you can deduct that. So um, keep that in mind. And then, so when we have clients come to us, they're usually either two extremes. They're either way too aggressive on what they can deduct or they're not aggressive enough. So the first, that first slide addressed what was, what you can deduct for the people who usually aren't aggressive enough. But sometimes we get people who are way too aggressive and they try and deduct like clothing and like personal groceries and just anything that they, they can come up with. And obviously that wouldn't, that wouldn't hold up if, if you ever get audited. So um, unless you're an influencer and you're buying clothing specific for like posting uh, posts and things like that, um, you can only deduct clothing is if it's essential for your job or if it's distinctive or protective, which usually doesn't apply to, to freelancers or creatives, um, unless you're like using certain like protective clothing for some specific type of art you're creating, like painting or something. Um, and it's unsuitable for everyday wear. Uh, like an example would be like a uniform or worn by a security guard or scrubs by a surgeon. Um, and then also uh, gifts, sometimes people get a little too aggressive on this. The, the IRS rule is you can deduct up to $25 per client for any gift that you're giving, um, except for unless it's like a, like if you're like a dentist and you're giving away pens or toothbrushes that it, and it's less than $4, then that limit doesn't apply. But anything else, if you're giving, um, gifts to a client it's only you can only deduct $25 for each client so keep that in mind um, and then another I don't have it listed here but another item is is entertainment entertainment is is no longer deductible that that deduction we used to be able to deduct 50 percent but you can't deduct any entertainment so um, if you're taking a client out to a concert you can deduct the meal but not like the the cost of the concert because that's considered entertainment so keep that in mind um and then i think that's about it uh just keep in mind you can deduct as a creative there's just a, a plethora of things that people don't realize they can deduct so when you're doing your taxes either if you're doing them alone or if you're having somebody help you that's not used to working with creatives uh definitely uh keep these these hacks in mind um so the third hack uh home office tax deductions for remote workers um obviously two years ago this wasn't as relevant as it is now seems like a ton like probably a third of our clients are, are working from home now if not more um so i thought i'd just kind of give you the the basics of this um so uh, one big misconception I want to clear up before we get into it is a W-2 employee versus a 1099 contractor. So a lot of people who are W-2 employees think because they're working at home, they can deduct um, their home office expenses and they actually can't. So these deductions are not available to W-2 employees, only uh, 1099 contractors, i.e. like S corp owners or, or uh, sole proprietors, essentially. Um, so as a 1099 contractor, uh, if you're working from home, you can deduct 100% of your internet, 100% of your cell phone. They used, the IRS used to try and make you apportion that out um, between business and personal, but they, they don't make you do that anymore. So as long as you're uh, self-employed, you can deduct 100% of both cell phone and internet. Um, and then all your, the cost of your furniture, even if you didn't buy, say you have like a nice desk that you paid like $1,000 for a few years ago, but you weren't working from home, you can actually put that in your, in your home office and start depreciating that um over usually it's usually five years so you can get like any furniture that you use you can you can depreciate um and then the actual cost of your cell phone 
uh, you can, I know cell phones are sometimes getting into the thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range. So you can you can actually deduct that either depreciate it or take bonus depreciated depreciation on it. So keep that. That's in addition to your monthly cell phone charge. So keep that in mind. Um, child care, even if you're working from home, uh, if you have children and you have you're paying child care expense, you, you can deduct that. Um, and then, so there's two ways to take the home office deduction. And just like with, with auto mileage, there's two ways. There's a standard and actual that, that applies to home office deduction. So there's actual costs and the standard rate of $5 per square foot. So the IRS says to have a home office, you have to have an area in your home that's exclusively used as a home office. So that can either be a separate room or if you're in like an apartment that just has like, that's like a studio apartment or something. If you have an area sectioned off where you have your desk and your chair and everything, you can be somewhat, um, you have to be reasonable, but you can say, all right, this section is exclusively for me working and call that your home office. So you don't have to have a separate room, um, but, so out of these two ways, I'll go through an example and show you how a um, how it can create a, a, a drastically different tax bill by using one method or the other. So I'll just use this uh, example. Say there's a somebody that has a just a small condo. Um, it's a 600 square foot condo. I know, and like if you're living in Manhattan, that's not that small, but um, anyway, a 600 square foot condo, say you apportion off, it's a studio, uh, you apportion off a 10 by 10 block, which is 100 square foot as your home office. And say the cost of the condo was just 200,000. I know that's completely unrealistic if you're living in any big city, but just for purposes of this example, we'll keep it simple and say 200,000. Um, so if you use the simplified method, which is just the actual um, or, or just the $5 per square foot, you have 100 square foot times five, you get a $500 deduction. But if you use the actual expenses, you can write off um, like your utilities, your power, gas, water, all those utilities. You add that up and then you either can deduct the your 12 months of rent or if you own the condo, you can actually depreciate that. And then you take the percentage of your home office versus the total. So if the total is 600 and your home office is, is 100, that's 17% of your, of your home offices or of your home is, is dedicated to that. So you can write off 17% of either the rent, the depreciation and all the utilities. So if you do that, um, just in this calculation, it's a $1,500 deduction versus the, the $500 deduction. Um, so, I mean, if, you're, if your marginal tax rate is like 20% or, or 30%, that's the $300 savings right there. So, um, and when you're doing your taxes, usually if you're, if you're using DIY software, it's, you can do it, but some people, we get clients who try and do it themselves this way and it, it just doesn't work. Um, so I'd recommend having like a tax prepared do it if you're gonna use the, the actual cost method, um, just because it's just easier and you'll end up saving. The savings you get from using a tax preparer will far outweigh the cost you 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 pay them. And that's, that's overall with with all the deductions as well. So um, keep that in mind, but <clears throat> so yeah, those are the, the three hacks that uh, I think you can use uh, to just say, make an immediate impact on, on your tax bill and, and reduce that. Uh, so if you implement those for 2022, uh, you could save anywhere from a few hundred dollars to probably a few thousand. So uh, awesome. just wanted to keep this session pretty short and uh, sweet and show those wow. to you.
Yeah, does anybody have questions or? Yeah, thank you, George. Um, I have a couple of questions and if anybody else does, just drop in the chat or interrupt me. Um, so let's say you wanna start paying quarterly now. Can I start now or do I have to wait until January of the new year? Like, how does that work? Uh, you mean quarterly estimated payments? Yeah. Um, you're the you're supposed to pay as you earn. So um, your first quarterly payment for 2022 was mm -hmm. due April 15. Mm -hmm. um, it's usually due the 15 days after the end of the quarter. Mm -hmm. um, but there, so the way it works for the IRS, the first the first quarter is three months. Okay. Um, January, February, March, and then it's due April 15th. And then the second quarter, I think, is two months. And then the third is four months. And then the last is three months again. And it's always due um, 15 days after the end of the quarter. Um, I'm not, they're, they're, the two middle ones, they're, for some reason, they're weird. And one's a two month quarter and the other one's a three month quarter. And I can't, I can, I always forget. I have, you can Google it, just put, just Google when are quarterly estimated tax payments due and it'll tell you okay. every date, but yeah. Okay. So definitely, yeah, if you, if you haven't made any for the first quarter, get those in as soon as possible. Okay, okay, I see, that makes sense. Um, and I use TurboTax, but is there a better tax paying platform for 1099 workers? Um, I mean, if there's, there's the DIY route, which TurboTax pretty much dominates. Okay. And then there's the <clears throat> sort of hybrid route, which is what we are, where you work with a CPA online. And then the other extreme is you can walk into like a, a, a tax prep franchise, like H and R block. Yeah. Liberty tax. So if you're a freelancer and I think you're making over like anything over like 50 or 60,000. I think to do, try and do it yourself, you're probably not going to, the, the costs of paying somebody either through like a hybrid method, like tax hub, or just walking in, you're going to end up saving more money by having somebody do it for you. If you're a freelancer and you're just making like 10, 20,000 a year, just as a side gig, and you have like a, a W-2 job, you could probably do it on TurboTax mm -hmm. or Tax Act or one of those, any of them, there's probably four or five really good ones that you can do it yourself on. But anything beyond like the 40 or 50,000, I would say have somebody do it, just work okay. with somebody online. Cause I mean, like we charge for, our basic for just a schedule C plus the, the 1040 is 259. Yeah. But 95% of the time we what the 259 we charge, we end up saving that customer another like three or four hundred or five hundred. So they're money ahead to work with somebody. Okay. So yeah. It's just getting people to realize that that upfront cost of paying somebody mm -hmm. when you're actually saving a lot more money is it's hard to do but yeah, yeah i need to make that kind switch. of a general rule yeah yeah i i also need to make that switch that's good advice thank you um, yeah thanks for asking that question yeah, because that 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 needs to be known amongst the freelance community i yeah. think that's a big mistake a lot of freelancers think totally. they can do it themselves and save money when in the end it ends up costing them so definitely yeah, yeah. Um, I think those are all my questions for today. I think Anjali asked a question in the middle of it. Um, but yeah, I think I think that is good for today. All right, cool. Great. Thank you so much, George. We always appreciate you. Yeah. yeah. Glad to thank you for the opportunity and hopefully we save some money for you guys. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay, thank you. Have a good one. All right, you too. Take care. Bye.